So far in 2024, we've gotten plenty of great movies. We had Doom 2, Deadpool and Wolverine, and plenty more. But now we have four months left in the year, and there's still plenty of movies to see. Here are my top 10 most anticipated movies for the rest of the year. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see if your most anticipated movie made my list. Kicking things off at number 10 is Craven the Hunter. Now I know what you're thinking. Now I'm no stranger to just how bad these Sony villain Spider-Man universe movies are. Morbius, not good. Madam Web, not good. Their most successful movies are the Venom movies, and I hate those movies. And I know you're gonna say, but Gavin, he's an anti-hero. I know that, but that's not the Venom we want. The Venom that I want is the one from the cartoons that I grew up watching, where he fought Spider-Man, the hero. And I have no doubt in my mind that Venom 3 is just gonna double down on the things that I didn't like about the franchise to begin with. Which brings us to Craven the Hunter. They said it was gonna be rated R, they showed us the trailer, it looks brutal, it looks gory, it looks very rated R. Now I don't expect Craven the Hunter to be this huge, grand, you know, extravagant, fantastic movie. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm interested that this might be the first somewhat good movie that Sony's putting out for their villain Spider-Man universe. Coming in at number nine is Smile 2. I remember seeing the first teaser trailer for Smile. The lady walks by the room, the guy's sitting on the bed with a big old smile on his face. Kind of awkward, kind of funny. Then it slowly turned creepy. The jump scares hit. The story was creepy, the imagery was terrifying, and one of the best parts about it is that you never know who's gonna turn around and have a big smile on their face when you least expect it. Which leads us to Smile 2, which is following a pop star, which gives us plenty of possibilities of how they can incorporate this crazy, creepy demon thing, you know, to follow her. Because if you're famous, you're gonna have tons of people around you at all times. You're gonna have fans running up to you, you're gonna have your agents, your backup singers, all that stuff, which leads to so many cool possibilities that they can use in this movie. The first Smile ended up being a surprise hit, and I actually think that Smile 2 has potential to be even better. Coming in at number eight is Speak No Evil. This is a remake of a movie that was just made in 2022. Us Americans love our remakes, don't we? We jumped right on that thing. I just watched the original about a month ago, and I gotta say, that movie's gonna stick with a lot of people. And if Blumhouse is able to bring the same, you know, style, the same ending of that one, this is gonna be a movie people are gonna be talking about for a long time. But even going further than the story or even the shock value that happens in that story, the biggest reason I wanna see this is James McAvoy. We all saw what he's able to do in Split. He's gonna bring that same crazy mentality to this movie. And I know the trailer gives off a lot of what happens in the movie. You know, you see him going a little bit crazy, a little bit violent. But, you know, I, there's got to be more. There's going to be more in this movie that we have not seen yet, and I cannot wait to see what he does. Coming in at number seven, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 3. We just finally got the trailer for the movie that comes out on December 20th. Very small window, but we finally got the trailer, and it looks incredible. Every time these movies are released, I always have to think back to that first Sonic reveal, that Sonic trailer that gave us the craziest Sonic design I could ever think of. Wow. That was weird. And the fact that the fans were able to come together, voice their opinion, and actually make the studio change the design to what we got now is incredible. Seriously, imagine if Shadow, Tails, Knuckles all looked similar to what that first Sonic design looked like. No thank you. But Shadow looks fantastic, Keanu Reeves sounds great as Shadow, and it looks like it's gonna follow his story for the majority of the movie. It kinda reminds me of Infinity War, how that was Thanos' movie. That's what I want for this. I want this to be Shadow's movie, and based on the trailer, we might be getting that. And more Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik never hurt anyone. Number six is Gladiator 2. Director Ridley Scott said this is gonna be his best movie he's ever made. You sure about that? Look, I'm not saying that it won't be his best movie ever made. I just don't see how this is gonna be his best movie, but if he's willing to bet that, I'm gonna go see it. Now I do feel like this movie is completely unnecessary, but he is giving us more Pedro Pascal, so there's that. Number five is Terrifier 3. I don't know why it's so high on my list, but it is. Now I'm not a big fan of the first Terrifier, but when I saw Terrifier 2 for the first time, wow. It's still a slasher movie with tons of gore, tons of violence, but there was just something about it that set it apart from the rest. Now Terrifier 2 ran a little bit longer than it should have, but it set up a lot of story threads that I hope that the third one answers. And I know that one of the main goals of Terrifier 3 is to outdo Terrifier 2, and if they're trying to outdo that bedroom scene in Terrifier 2, God help us. Coming in at number four is Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. This is a sequel that I never thought I was gonna get. When I was a kid, I was watching the first Beetlejuice over and over and over again. It was easily one of my favorite movies from my childhood. One of the biggest reasons that I think the movie's gonna succeed and, you know, be good is that Tim Burton's back, Michael Keaton's back, Winona Ryder's back. A lot of people from the first movie are back, and that's something that they probably didn't want to do unless they believed in the film. Plus, we have newcomers like Willem Dafoe, Jenna Ortega, just to add to the star power that the movie already has. Number three is Lord of the Rings, War of the Rorahim. I hope I said that right. 
Before I knew any details of this movie, all they had to say was Lord of the Rings and I was there. But the great thing about this movie is that it's set 200 years before The Fellowship of the Ring, so it's not going to have to focus on any of that and you know have any of that baggage. You know, It's going to be its own set story. But the number one reason that I'm excited for this movie is because it looks like this. I pledge to fight for my king. You know nothing of war. I'm the fastest rider you have. Now, I'm not a big anime fan, but the fact that we're getting a hand-drawn full feature film going to theaters is just incredible in and itself. The fact that you throw in Lord of the Rings and the epic set pieces that we're about to get with this, I am there. Number two is Joker Folly Ado. The fact that they're making a sequel to the first one, completely unnecessary, completely unwarranted, but bring it on. Going back to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, Tim Burton and Michael Keaton are coming back for that because I hope it's something that they believe in. The same thing with this. Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix are coming back. The fact that they're making another movie out of that storyline says that they have something to say. That mixed with, you know, WB about to pay them some good money, that's probably part of it too. And then you bring in Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn and you know, she looks a little bit different and she's acting a little bit different than the other Harley Quinn iterations that we've gotten before. And that's the great thing about these characters. You can get different iterations on every project that they put out. They don't all have to be the same. And actually this character of Harley Quinn, her iteration of it might end up being a lot of people's favorites. I'm not saying it's going to be, but it could. And there are reports from the very beginning that this might be a musical, which is going to turn a lot of people off but at the same time, they haven't fully committed to calling it a musical. There's still a lot of mystery surrounding Joker Folly Ado, and I cannot wait to see what Todd Phillips has in store for us. Now, before I give you my number one pick, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching up to this point in the video. If you like the video, consider hitting that subscribe button, because on my channel, I'm gonna give you movie news, reviews, rankings, recaps, and plenty more. Now, let's go to the number one pick. Coming in at number one is Nosferatu, a remake of the old classic silent film that we all know and love, thanks to SpongeBob. Nosferatu! First off, this movie is completely stacked. We have Robert Eggers directing it. He did The Witch, The Lighthouse, The Northman. He's able to create such creepy and atmospheric movies, and he's going to have a gothic overlay to that in Nosferatu. I can't wait to see what he's able to do with that. And then we have a star-studded cast with Willem Dafoe, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Nicholas Hall, and of course, Bill Skarsgård as Count Orlock. Now, when you think of Bill Skarsgård, you automatically think of Pennywise because of how well he did with that iteration of Pennywise. And then we get the smallest look of him as Count Orlock in the Nosferatu trailer, which I think is just perfect marketing. Don't show him. And I know that they're going to probably end up showing what he looks like, you know, before the movie comes out in December because they have to sell movie tickets. I get it. But the fact that they kept what he looks like secret in the trailer and they haven't shown any actual image of him yet leads me to believe he's going to look pretty crazy. Nosferatu has all the ingredients needed to give us one of the most memorable and maybe one of the best horror movies of all time. And that's it. That's my list. That's my top 10 most anticipated movies of the rest of 2024. Please let me know what your most anticipated movies are in the comments section below. And until next time, everybody, see you later.